Digital payments have become an essential aspect of our daily lives, whether it's for a simple coffee purchase or when you are dividing expenses among friends. In this video, we'll examine the fundamentals of digital payments, starting with payment gateways and payment processors like PayPal and Stripe, and explore some of the interesting aspects of security such as encryption and tokenization. We'll also look into payment networks such as Visa or MasterCard, along with the roles of banks so that you get the complete picture. Once you have grasped the fundamentals of payments, stay tuned for a follow-up video where we'll design an entire payment system from start to finish. So, let's get started. Imagine you are shopping online and you see a cool video game you want to buy. You click on it and add it to your cart. When you are ready to pay, you proceed to the checkout page where you specify your purchase. The online store offers various payment options, including credit cards, debit cards, and digital wallets, providing you with multiple tools for completing your game purchase. Now, the payment gateway is the first point of contact when you, the customer, initiates a card transaction online. It's like a special assistant that takes your payment information and sends it to the bank to make sure you have enough money to buy the game. It performs an initial check to ensure that the customer's payment details are correctly formatted and complete. This includes verifying the credit card number, expiration date, and the CVV or card verification value. The payment gateway may also perform an address verification to validate the customer's billing address matches the one on the record with the bank, which helps to prevent fraud. So it primarily handles the authorization of the transaction and the secure transfer of payment information. Payment gateways use data encryption during the transmission of payment information to protect it from interception. So when you enter your credit card information on an online shopping website, that information is encrypted before it is transmitted to the payment gateway. So even if someone were to intercept the data during this process, it would be virtually unreadable without the decryption key. Encryption involves converting the original payment data into a coded format that can only be deciphered with the proper decryption key. And this I have covered in detail in my HTTPS video, where I talk about various security algorithms and their use in depth. Payment gateways also use tokenization to protect sensitive payment data when it's stored, whether on a merchant server or within the payment gateway system. So when you have made a purchase on an e-commerce website, instead of storing your actual credit card number, the merchant stores a token that represents your card. Encryption primarily protects data during transit, the journey from your device to the gateway and then to the merchant. While tokenization protects data at rest when it is stored on the servers. With encryption, the original data is decrypted for processing once it reaches its destination. And with tokenization, the original data is never stored or exposed in the first place. Tokens are used for all future transactions. And in the event of a data breach, encrypted data might still be vulnerable because it can be decrypted with the right key. In contrast, tokenized data is much less useful to hackers as the actual card information is never stored. These two security measures by Payment Gateway work together to provide a robust and layered defense against unauthorized access and fraud in the digital payment ecosystem. Note that the Payment Gateway itself does not directly check the availability of funds in the customer's bank account. That specific fund availability check is carried out by the payment processor during the authorization process. The payment gateway primarily handles the transmission of payment data between the customer, the merchant, and the payment processor. So it acts as a bridge for data. Once the payment gateway has verified the card details, it forwards the transaction to the payment processor. The payment processor communicates with the customer's bank to verify whether there are sufficient funds available to cover the transaction amount. If the funds are available, the payment processor obtains an authorization from the bank which confirms that the transaction can proceed. If the funds are not available, the transaction is declined and this information is sent back to the payment gateway, which then informs the customer or merchant. A payment processor here is the entity responsible for actually moving the money between accounts. It often works closely with the issuing bank, which is the customer's bank and acquiring bank or merchant's bank. It communicates with the issuing bank to confirm that the customer has the necessary funds or credit limit. Now, both payment gateways and payment processors often work with Visa and MasterCard payment networks when processing credit and debit card transactions. These companies don't directly process transactions or serve as payment gateways. Instead, 
they partner with banks and financial institutions that issue their cards to consumers. When you use a Visa or MasterCard, your transaction data is processed through payment network and they facilitate the communication between the issuing bank and the acquiring bank. This I have covered in detail in my previous video on buy now pay later services and credit card processing, where I talk in detail about issuing bank, acquiring bank, how credit cards are issued and the role of payment networks such as Visa or MasterCard. Basically, when you make a payment with a Visa or MasterCard, the payment gateway and payment processor work together to transmit and process the transaction through the respective payment network. The network ensures that the transaction is authorized and securely moves the money from the customer's account to the merchant's account, completing the payment process. So while payment gateway tends to play the traffic cop to approve or reject a transaction and is the first point of contact when customer initiates a card transaction online, payment processors ensure your money moves from your account to the merchant seamlessly. When a business or an online store decides to accept payments, they evaluate and choose a payment gateway and payment processor. This choice is based on factors like transaction fees, the types of payment methods supported, the security features, customer support and other relevant services. Now there are some companies for instance Stripe and PayPal that perform both of these services. To the average person it might seem like they are pretty much the same thing. But there are exceptions to this. Some companies just deal with the payment gateways while others stick to payment processing. However, in most cases today, you will find that if a company offers one service, they will likely offer the other service too. So it is easier to think of these two things as two separate services rather than being from entirely different companies.